So then, uh, you have a, do you have a, some, like a, some attendance you want to wait for? I'm looking for whether uh, uh, the professor Yao is here or not. I think he's here and you can start. If you have someone you yeah, want uh, I'm fine. You're I fine? can start now. Yeah. So, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me uh, share the screen. Uh, let me introduce you. I haven't introduced. Sorry, I have some big one noise. Let me. Okay. Let, let, okay. Great. It looks good. Okay, let me get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Harvard Quantum Matter in Math Physics Series Seminar. Today, we are very honored to have Professor Zheng Chen Gu, uh, Zheng Chen from the uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong. And uh, he will be telling us an exciting story that he developed uh, recently on the topological quantum field theory in three plus one dimensions and emergent quantum gravity. And let's welcome Zheng Chen. Uh, uh, thanks, Joanne. Uh, OK, so can you hear me? Yes. Yes. OK, OK, great. So uh, yeah, um, thanks, Joanne, for arranging this uh, uh, special seminar uh, during this uh, special period. So uh, today I will talk about uh, uh, topological quantum field theory in 3 plus 1D and uh, emergent quantum gravity. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh, most uh, part of this talk uh, uh, is still some ongoing uh, work. So uh, yeah, so uh, uh, any uh, discussion, uh, suggestion, and comments are uh, very welcome. Um, Okay. Yeah, so uh, let me uh, just start from this uh, 2 plus 1D case. Uh, so uh, uh, I believe uh, most of you, uh, uh, yeah, especially with Kenneth's matter background, uh, should hear about this uh, uh, story for fractional quantum Hall effect. So uh, yeah, as first proposed by Bob Laughlin, uh, the fractional quantum Hall state uh, grounds the wave function can be written as this uh, uh, Laughlin form. Um, so, so this Laughlin wave function uh, basically uh, describe, describe this uh, uh, anion gas and uh, equivalently uh, it can also be uh, rewritten in terms of this uh, very famous effective field theory, uh, the so-called Chen Zeman theory. Yeah, so for, for example, this uh, uh, Laughlin um, uh, state with, with feeling fraction uh, 1 over 2m plus 1, so it can be just uh, uh, described by this U1 transcendence theory uh, with level 2m plus 1. Uh, and uh, it uh, described this very interesting uh, physics, uh, yeah, according to this uh, transcendence term. Uh, I will explain more later in the next page. Uh, so the basic pic uh, physical picture is that uh, uh, the transcendence term will introduce the charge and the flux attachment. So in terms of this cartoon, uh, we can uh, imagine in the in the presence of a very strong magnetic field. Uh, for example, uh, let's take m equal to one. So it's a one third Laughlin state. Right? So in this case, uh, yeah, the uh, 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 feeling fraction is one third. That means uh, uh, each electron uh, can have uh, three flux tube. Uh, this flux tube is the flux quanta uh, for the first and lambda level. So in this cartoon, effectively. Uh, each electron can have a uh, three flux two. And uh, after this charge flux attachment, uh, effectively uh, the fundamental excitation in this system will be the uh, flux quanta and it will carry a uh, charge one third. So this is a very, very famous uh, story of this uh, 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 charge fractionalization. And uh, uh, Laughlin also introduced a picture of uh, uh, statistics transmutation. Uh, uh, that is if the electron uh, form, uh, forms the bound, bound state with uh, uh, three flux two. Uh, then uh, the composite particle is a boson. And uh, in terms of a physical picture, this composite particle uh, can condense. And this uh, condensator uh, describes this uh, famous uh, Laughlin one set state. And uh, of course, we, uh, we have much better modern understanding for this uh, uh, so-called uh, topological physics in two plus one D. Uh, in terms of uh, abstract uh, tensor category theory. And uh, uh, in this uh, abstract tensor category theory, 
uh, we have very basic basic data describe this uh, self breeding and mutual breeding uh, statistics and on top of that uh, for this chiral topology order we can also introduce the chiral center charge uh, which describe this uh, this this patient is current uh, on the edge of the system so with this uh, uh, yeah with this uh, three types of data uh, it actually can capture most of this topological physics uh, yeah, but uh, but uh, uh, these properties actually are also well encoded in this uh, uh, very simple uh, transcendence action. So I will uh, briefly uh, uh, review how to uh, compute this uh, uh, data from this very simple action uh, as a simple example. So uh, we know this uh, uh, very simple pass integral approach. So in the pass integral approach, we first write on this uh, uh, level K transcendence action, right? Uh, so just here, and uh, we also can add a, a coupling term with the current. Uh, then we can uh, we can uh, integrate out this uh, uh, gauge field A mu and uh, derive some uh, effective effective coupling. And uh, this uh, effective coupling between this current can directly tell us this uh, fractional charge carried uh, by the excitations of the system. But uh, but there is uh, uh, also more. Um, <coughs> Uh, yeah, a more uh, traditional uh, way to de derive this uh, similar physics. So this is a path integral approach, uh, which is very formal. Uh, so in this uh, very traditional uh, canon canonical quantization, uh, we can just uh, start in with the pure transcendence term without this uh, uh, coupling term. So uh, this path integral approach is usually used in the uh, subfield field of uh, high energy physics and uh, in kind of matter physics, people usually use this so-called canonical quantization method. And uh, in this canonical quantization method, we just uh, integral out this A0 field. Yeah, so we, we have A0 component, A1 component, and A2 component for this mu. Uh, so zero is a time component, and a one and a two is a spatial component. Uh, so once we integral out this A0 component, we get a so-called flat connection constraint, uh, which means this, uh, uh, U1 gauge field is just a flat connection. And, uh, and then uh, we can look at this uh, 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 spatial component, A1 uh, part zero A2 and A2 part zero A, A1. Yeah, basically they are the same term. So that term just basically, it's a uh, uh, very phase term actually because uh, involving this uh, uh, time derivative. So yeah, Due to this kind of very phase term, uh, this A1 and A2, uh, they are not a commute. So yeah, that's the uh, essential physics of uh, non-commutative geometry in the first and longer level. So because of this non-commutative relation, uh, we can further compute this uh, commutator for this, uh, uh, for example, for the Wilson loop. And uh, uh, this gamma and the gamma prime is some uh, non-contractible loop, yeah, the, the so-called large loop. And this new just uh, uh, just uh, it's an integer ju just a cr uh, cross section of these two loops. So uh, yeah, it's very straightforward to compute this uh, 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 commutator of this two Wilson loop, and we get this uh, quantized number two pi over k. And uh, uh, which essentially uh, uh, also tell us this uh, uh, fractional charge carried by the elementary excitation. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, here we can also find this Wilson line uh, operate and uh, we, we can further uh, compute this uh, 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 commutator along x and y direction and uh, we get a yeah, yeah, according to this rela relation we intermediate get this 2 pi i over k and from this formula we can also read out this uh, k for the degeneracy on torus uh, so that's a very efficient way to read out this uh, basic uh, uh, breeding data from this uh, topological quantum field theory Okay, so uh, yeah, if there's no question, uh, let me just move to the three plus one case. Yeah, I think this is very basic and simple. Uh, so in three plus one D, uh, our knowledge of uh, uh, topological phases of quantum matter uh, actually is very limited. But uh, in recent years, uh, there's a, a very um, interesting progress along this direction. Uh, so first, uh, it has been shown uh, all intrinsic topological phases in three plus one D interacting bosonic and ferromagnetic systems uh, can be ob obtained by 
gauging certain SPT phases. Yeah, so uh, SPT phases, uh, some of you, I think, may be familiar. Uh, I think uh, Qianrui gave a very uh, good, good talk last week, and uh, yeah, also described this systematic classification of SPT phases. Um, yeah, so the so-called gauged SPT phases, you can, in general, can be just regarded as certain types of uh, digraph witten gauge theory, or its generalization into fermion systems. So, so the scheme is that uh, when we coupling the SPT phases to a dynamic gauge field uh, with a corresponding uh, symmetry group, uh, then uh, in principle, we can derive all the topological phases in three plus one D. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, it's still not a rigorous uh, uh, mathematical proof, still just a conjecture. <coughs> uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, yeah, some other work also indicated this uh, uh, three loop breeding statistics actually uh, are the only non-trivial breeding process in three plus one D. So uh, in two plus one D, uh, we know uh, yeah, the breeding process is just very simple. Just that uh, we have two particles and they have uh, mutual breeding uh, and self breeding. And uh, uh, in three plus one, the hour, uh, yeah, I will tell you more detail in the next page. Uh, the basic breeding process actually evolves for three loops. Uh, yeah, there are some reasons that this uh, uh, two loop breeding process is not uh, interesting. But, uh, but actually, uh, there's also uh, some argument that uh, this is three loop breeding process will be general enough. And any other kind of breeding process actually can be built up based on this very fundamental uh, three loop breeding uh, process. So uh, then we have a very natural question. If the transcendence theory is a well-known uh, topological quantum field theory in two plus one D describing non-trivial particle breeding statistics, uh, then what's the corresponding topological quantum field theory uh, in three plus one D describing the non-trivial three loop operating statistics. Yeah, if we have a systematical understanding uh, for this kind of TKFT, uh, then we, we probably have much better understanding uh, for this uh, generic uh, uh, topological physics in three plus one D. Excuse me. Uh, okay. I think uh, the sentence you mean, the three loop operating process on the non-trivial braiding process, you mean, you probably mean that these are not the only non-trivial braiding one, but probably some building block, right? Uh, yeah, it's a fundamental building block. You can have much more complicated braiding process, but uh, yeah, but, uh, but uh, yeah, here non-trivial, maybe, maybe, maybe I should call it a basic. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so uh, uh, as long as you have this three loop braiding process, you can uh, build up a much more complicated braiding process. Actually, this is based on like whose work suggests this might be true. Like this understanding of building blocks just from this process. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, Qin Rui has some unfinishing work, but uh, yeah, but uh, it's still not a, also it's not a, a very rigorous uh, proof. It's just uh, some yeah, just uh, some arguments. It is yeah, so, 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 so so I think uh, uh, both work uh, uh, from Xiao Gang and. Uh, yeah, from Qin Rui and also from Chen Ji, I think they have some arguments. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, all these work, they are not uh, a mathematical proof. But, uh, but, but so far, I think there's no counter example uh, yes. beyond this kind of uh, topological phases. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay. May, can you clarify uh, the three loop braiding statistics? Is this a complementary classification to the uh, bullet number one? you know, gauging uh, SPTs, or is this uh, something that comes out from the, from gauging SPT classification? Uh, can you repeat the question again? <clears throat> it's I'm, trying, right. I'm trying to send the relation between bullet number two, three loop braiding, and bullet number okay. gauging. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, actually, there are, yeah, in, 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 uh, in next few pages, I try to argue and explain, uh, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So it's, you can think of it as like a, you, you're trying to come up with a uh, complementary but equivalent classification using three loop braiding. Is that? Yeah, at least uh, I think it's, uh, it's true for the bosonic case. Uh, okay. For the fermentic case, it's more complicated. But uh, for any abelian group, actually, uh, we, uh, yeah, we, we, we use two different methods and come up with the uh, uh, same results, same classification. Yeah. 
So, uh, so I think uh, we, 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 we have some uh, uh, example uh, for abelian group, but for very complicated uh, finite group, uh, we still don't know the results. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, we know there are uh, various of uh, breeding statistics in 3D. So the, uh, yeah, most simple uh, breeding, just uh, child to child breeding. And uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, because the, uh, in, 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 in 3D, uh, the, it's well known this child to child breeding uh, just uh, can be both on a fermion. And, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, there's a much more, uh, possibility in 3D because we can have loop-like excitation. So for example, in this cartoon, uh, if you're really living in water and uh, you uh, make this uh, uh, flux ring and you can see this very uh, nice loop braiding process. Uh, and this uh, <coughs> charge loop braiding is also well understood just as uh, uh, AB effects. And this uh, uh, two loop braiding uh, actually, it can be reduced to child loop braiding uh, because you can imagine a one of the loop just uh, shrink to a very small, uh, just like a point. Uh, then it just go back to this uh, uh, usual uh, AB effect. So uh, yeah, that's the reason why this uh, uh, two loop braiding process is not so interesting. Uh, so the yeah, so uh, there are many evidence, and uh, uh, people also try to argue this uh, so-called three loop breeding is the most uh, fundamental and uh, uh, most non-trivial uh, breeding process uh, because we can uh, just have a, a base loop. Uh, you can imagine uh, there's a hidden base loop in this cartoon. Uh, then when this two loop breeding, uh, none, of them, none of the loop can shrink into a point because uh, there's a non-trivial limiting here. Uh, so yeah, so, so there are several ways to visualize this uh, uh, three loop breeding process. Uh, um, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, also we can uh, yeah we can establish some very simple algebraic relation uh, for this three loop operating data. Uh, so here just to summarize about this uh, uh, result from uh, Michael Levin uh, and the Chen Jie's uh, uh, work. So they consider this very uh, simple uh, abelian group case. Uh, suppose uh, uh, this total group G. Uh, is Zn to the case power. Yeah, but this basic three loop breeding process actually uh, the, the minimal uh, uh, gauge group just uh, uh, Zn to the cube. Yeah, because the, uh, which only involve uh, uh, three uh, uh, Zn uh, flux lines. So, uh, so yeah, here, here they uh, just label this uh, uh, three loop breeding phase as C the IJK because uh, uh, very different from the uh, two particle braiding, there always uh, has a base loop. So this K is a label of the base loop. So this IJ just uh, uh, similar to this 2D uh, particle braiding uh, label this uh, uh, two, two, two different loop. So here in this very simple example, just uh, uh, two different types of ZM flux lines. Uh, and also they multiplied by uh, this uh, uh, integer N for the ZM gauge field because uh, uh, yeah, for any kind of Zn loop, you can also uh, attach this Zn charge. So then you can make a, a different kind of uh, braiding phase due to this AB effect. So in order to eliminate this uh, ambiguity, uh, typically uh, they just uh, define this uh, uh, three loop braiding phase as a capital theta. So, so yeah, it's n times this small theta. Uh, okay. Uh, then uh, they, they show actually uh, this capital theta ij comma k uh, satisfies certain constraints. So the first constraint is that it's uh, symmetric. So this is very uh, easy to expect, right? Uh, so when you exchange ij and it goes ji, so this is uh, similar to this uh, uh, particle braiding. Uh, and uh, there's another constraint is this uh, theta i i k, k is a base loop. So suppose we, uh, you have this, uh, um, same type of particle. Yeah, then this uh, uh, same type of particle, uh, here this i comma k just means the uh, exchange of, uh, of, of two particles. So the exchange of two particles uh, should, should be expected as uh, uh, just a half of this full braiding. Uh, 
with the same speed of particle. And uh, uh, this is uh, the most non-trivial relation, uh, which is similar to this uh, Bianca identity. So uh, when, when you just uh, uh, yeah, doing this uh, uh, cyclic uh, uh, exchange of this uh, index, ij comma k plus jk comma i plus ki comma j uh, must equal to zero. So th this is kind of a mystery and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, easy to understand uh, in a very simple uh, picture. But uh, later uh, in our computation of this uh, uh, topological quantum field theory, uh, we will see this kind of relation becomes very natural. Uh, and finally, uh, there's also some more relation uh, like this is theta i comma k uh, plus theta, uh, here's theta i k comma i plus theta i comma k equals zero. Uh, yeah, so this is also not a very obvious. And also, uh, and finally, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually it's an assumption, it's theta i i equals zero. So uh, this uh, assumption, um, yeah, because uh, from this Bianca uh, relation, if we put if we put uh, all this uh, um, i j k equal to i, uh, you can only get a relation three times theta i i equal to zero. So so this uh, uh, for a single theta i i equal to zero, uh, it's an assumption because it's stronger than uh, uh, the relation here. Uh, but again, from this quantum field theory, uh, we will also see uh, this relation very natural. Uh, so finally, uh, by solving uh, these constraints. Uh, for for this z n to the case power of gauge gauge theory, uh, they show that this c i j k can take this very uh, elementary uh, fractionalized number uh, two pi over n. Yeah, so n just uh, the uh, uh, z n gauge gauge field. Okay, so uh, now uh, let me introduce this uh, so-called uh, uh, twisted BF theory. So we, we, we try to use a quantum field theory framework to uh, derive this, uh, uh, yeah, the same results uh, from uh, solving these constraints. So the uh, proposed uh, uh, twisted BF theory uh, has the following form. Uh, so the first term, just uh, the usual uh, BF term, yeah, basically in terms of differential language, just a B wedge F. So, so it's, uh, uh, BF theory at level level n. So here I also assume there are three species. So so this capital I is a summation from one to three. So there are three uh, Zn gauge fields: Zn one, Zn two, Zn three. Uh, they are not necessary to be the same for n one to n three. Can be very general. And uh, and if we only have this first term, it's just a usual uh, BF theory, uh, which describing this uh, Zn gauge theory. Uh, if we take the BF theory at level n i, uh, so the uh, so the uh, non-trivial piece is this uh, second piece. So uh, so so this uh, second piece uh, have a form of this uh, uh, AADA. Yeah. So 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 I think uh, uh, this kind of term uh, first arises in a, a paper in collaboration with uh, Juven. Uh, uh, we are discussing about this uh, SPT invariants. So. Uh, it turns out to be uh, have such kind of kind of yeah. Actually, it's also conjecture uh, that certain SPT environments can have can take uh, such kind of form. Uh, so uh, here, when we consider this full gauge theory, uh, we have the advantage that uh, in the presence of such kind of term, uh, in principle, we can compute this detailed braiding data and to see whether it's indeed uh, described this three loop braiding. And, uh, and also, uh, if we apply this uh, large gauge transformation uh, for this uh, uh, AI gauge field, uh, we can show that M must take some quantized number. So uh, this, uh, yeah, this precise quantized number just, uh, uh, yeah, N12 is a graded common divider of N1 and N2, and P is just a time, some integer. So, so yeah, this is ex expected just like this level K BF theory. Uh, this AADA type term also uh, takes a uh, quantized uh, coefficient. Uh, next, uh, we uh, try to look at this gauge transformation for this uh, uh, AADA type term. So the gauge transformation here is very interesting because uh, for usual BF term, we can just have two types of independent uh, gauge transformation. 
So it, for example, we can have the uh, one form gate tra transformation. Uh, we just transform this AI to AI plus DFI. Yeah, right. That's a usual one form gate transformation. And we can also have this uh, usual uh, two form gate transformation, uh, just a BI transformed to BI plus DG, DGI, right? But, uh, but here we find that uh, uh, actually this is the one form uh, transformation uh, yeah, must uh, induce some non-trivial transformation for the uh, two form B fields as well. So for, for, uh, for example, if we apply this uh, uh, one form gauge transformation on AI, we must induce uh, additional gauge transformation for this B1 and B2. Yeah, because uh, uh, if you just define this uh, gauge transformation on A and not on B, uh, then you, you can easily see that uh, uh, yeah, this AADA term is not a gauge invariant, right? So uh, that's why uh, there must be a modification for this uh, gauge transformation on the B field. Uh, so later we'll also explain why uh, this kind of uh, uh, modified gauge transformation is natural uh, because the definition of the Wilson, Wilson surface operator actually is changed in this case. So here, uh, of course, for B3, just uh, 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 yeah, the gauge transformation just in the usual form because uh, for the A3 here, uh, yeah, it, it appears as a DA term. So when when we apply gauge transformation A3 to A3 plus DF3, uh, this term does not change. So there's no modification for the gauge transformation on uh, B3. It just uh, uh, apply this usual two form gauge transformation. So uh, now we uh, look at the detailed form of this uh, uh, Wilson's line and Wilson surface operator. Uh, so for the Wilson line operator. Uh, uh, question? Okay. Uh, yeah, in, in, in this Lagrangian, A1, A2, A3 a lot on equal footing. Uh, do you really mean you can define different kinds of such theories? And this is one member of the family of theories. Yeah, 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 of course. Because uh, uh, depending on uh, uh, how you uh, uh, cyclic this A1, A2, and A3, uh, I think one of them uh, representing this base loop. Yeah. So that's why it's not a symmetric. Okay, thanks. Uh, so here, when we define this uh, uh, Wilson surface operator, um, uh, we will see there's a, a modification. So for the usual Wilson surface operator, we just have this uh, uh, yeah, uh, integration on a closed surface of the B fields, right? But, uh, but here, due to this modification of this uh, 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 gauge transformation, actually we should define this Wilson surface operator as uh, 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 this usual definition plus this uh, transcendence density. So this uh, transcendence density term, uh, basically uh, suppose we have a closed surface, it's just, the, yeah, uh, just this volume enclosed by this closed surface. So such kind of uh, space-time Wilson surface operator actually can only be well defined on a closed surface. Yeah, but uh, uh, that's uh, 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 yeah, space-time uh, uh, Wilson surface operator. It's slightly different from the spatial Wilson surface operator that we'll um, mention later. <clears throat> okay, so now we can uh, apply this uh, uh, very standard canonical quantization uh, uh, scheme as well, uh, just uh, as what we did for the two plus one D case. So uh, in the first step, we just uh, define this uh, canonical momentum. Uh, so the yeah, uh, canonical momentum uh, basically uh, of for A basically just uh, uh, epsilon uh, times B. Uh, so yeah, this is easy to see uh, from the, yeah, from this BF term, we have a partial zero here. Uh, and, uh, and of course we also have partial zero here. So this, uh, yeah, so the why for this pi three, it's not just uh, uh, epsilon times B. We also have this A1, A2 term, yeah, so the, this is a very standard. And then we can uh, process this canonical uh, quantization uh, between this canonical momentum and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the AI uh, gauge field. Uh, and of course, uh, we can integral out this B0 and A0 uh, components. Uh, yeah, that's the time components of the gauge field, which is non-dynamical. And uh, yeah, similar as the 2D transcendence theory, uh, we can find the flat connection uh, constraints. 
So we, we, we can have two uh, flex, string, uh, flex connection constraints for both, uh, one form gauge field AI and two form gauge field uh, BI. Uh, so it's not as surprising because in any kind of uh, uh, topological gauge field theory, the, uh, yeah, the, um, mm -hmm. we can have, uh, we can only have uh, zero gauge connection. <clears throat> Uh, we can only have zero gauge field strings. Okay. Uh, now we can uh, we can further uh, uh, yeah we can further transform our canonical quantization relation between uh, AI and a pi i uh, into the into the canonical relation between a AI and bi. So now we can see that uh, for all the AI and the aj they commute. And AI and BJ, uh, they just uh, satisfy this uh, very standard uh, canonical quantization condition. Uh, and the interesting thing is that, uh, for example, uh, for B1 and B3, they are no longer commute. This is just uh, because this uh, uh, pi 3 and A3, they are not commute, right? <clears throat> yeah, and uh, uh, this uh, naturally requires this uh, uh, B1 and uh, uh, B3 not commute because uh, uh, you can you can write B3 and the pi3 uh, minus this A1 A2, and uh, because A1 and uh, B1 they are not commute, so you naturally expect to uh, have such kind of additional term uh, commutated between uh, B1 and B3. So so in the usual BF theory, uh, all these B fields uh, uh, themselves are yeah among themselves they are just a commute, and uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, among all these AI gauge fields, they are also commute. So here we, we, we will see this uh, interesting modification uh, is that this B1 and B3 not commute and the B2 and the B3 also not commute uh, just because this modification uh, of this canonical momentum. But of course, from the Wilson surface operator, you can also naturally expect uh, such, such kind of non-commutating uh, relation must appear. Okay, so uh, next we can just uh, compute this uh, uh, so-called three-loop operating process. Uh, so th this is actually also a very standard calculation um, <clears throat> because uh, uh, yeah, in terms of this cartoon, uh, we, we just have a base loop. So, so, so we can just imagine uh, uh, we can have a T3. So uh, uh, just to have a cubic lattice, but we will uh, just have a cubic, uh, uh, Yes, you can imagine we have a lattice model. Uh, we can just have a cubic lattice and with the periodic boundary condition along all three directions. So, so, so in this way, we can make uh, all the non-contractable. And, uh, and in this case, uh, this three-loop operating process can be just uh, computed uh, via this uh, commutator of this spatial uh, Wilson surface operator. <coughs> so so uh, for the spatial part, we will see this uh, Wilson surface operator actually reduced to the usual uh, definition of Wilson surface operator. Because uh, um, yeah, after canonical quantization, we see uh, the spatial part of AI and uh, uh, BI, they're just a flat connection. And then you uh, just uh, uh, put it into this uh, uh, space-time definition of Wilson surface operator, you will see the spatial part, uh, because it's a flat connection, this DA3 uh, just vanish. So when we compute this uh, uh, spatial Wilson surface operator, we will not worry about this additional piece because this additional piece makes it uh, uh, impossible to define such kind of uh, uh, Wilson surface operator on non contractible surface. But uh, in, our, uh, uh, yeah, in our trick, uh, we indeed want to define such kind of uh, Wilson surface operator on a non contractible surface, uh, such that we can again use the commutator to compute the uh, three loop breeding uh, Phase. So uh, yeah, so here just a k is the uh, still the base loop, and then uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, then in order to com compute this uh, uh, three loop operating angle, we just compute this uh, uh, yeah uh, we just compute this k. So basically, this k just a commutator. Uh, it's a, just an exponential of this commutator. And the X is just the Wilson, a spatial part of the Wilson surface operator. Uh, then we will see this uh, 
computed the uh, three loop breathing angle uh, precisely the same uh, as those uh, derived from this algebraic calculation. Uh, so in a very similar way, we can also compute like uh, theta ik, and uh, uh, we will also find all the uh, same relation uh, as the previous uh, algebraic calculation. And uh, also from the uh, definition here, uh, yeah, because it's just a three commented, so it's uh, straightforward to uh, verify this uh, uh, Bianca identity, uh, this cyclic relation for the uh, three loop breeding uh, phase. Uh, okay, so um, any problem for uh, this part? Uh, I have a question. Okay. So previously you said the Lagrangian, uh, so, so previously in the Lagrangian where you have uh, A1, A2, A3 not on equal footing. Yeah. So I thought this yeah. Lagrangian is defining the theory. After yeah, you yeah. define the theory, you can still choose either the flux loop of A1 or A2 or A3 to be the base loop and the other and the, the others to be the other loops. Uh, so uh, here are you saying on, only if you choose A3 to be the base loop, then the um, three loop reading is non-trivial or what? Uh, I think in this particular action, uh, yeah, actually A3 cannot be the base loop. So, so uh, you, you will see, so here we compute just for when, when this A2 is, the, either A2 or A1 can be the base loop. Yeah. Uh, you mean if A1 and A2, either A1 or A2 is the base loop, then the three loop reading will be non-trivial. Right, right, right. Otherwise, if, if I choose A3 to be uh, the base loop, then the three loop reading will be trivial. I think so, yeah. If you choose A3 to compute this quantity, there's nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's <laughs> another question. So I want to uh, understand if there's any physical picture of uh, that Lagrangian. So the usual BF theory can be understood by starting from a three-dimensional superfluid and condense some vortex loops. Uh, I wonder here the second term physically corresponds to uh, doing something to the vortex loops. Um. Yeah, I think this uh, just uh, this uh, vortex loop carries some uh, non-trivial barrier phase term. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, can you be more precise? Um, let me think about. Um. Let me comment one thing. For the Liu Jun, I think the, the first question you had is that uh, you ask uh, which 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 uh, which index that label the three gauge group as spatial. I think actually, as as Zhengchen say, I think indeed one and one and two you can choose as the uh, the base will be built if you say that way. And actually, you should you should actually regard the the the, the loop for the closed strings. As the end, uh, end, uh, open ends of some uh, surface operators, right? So, so then actually you shouldn't regard the loop as the A, but as the B field, right? So actually the the triple linking of the three loop breaking is actually the the worksheet from the B field. So the the first part of the answer should be B one B two can be chosen as a base loop, uh, which the base loop's time trajectory will. Uh, give the the wall sheet that uh, do the do the integration for the B field. That's the first part. Um, maybe for the second question, can you ask again? That, that probably helped to clarify. Uh -huh. I, I I was asking. Yeah, thanks for the comment of the first part. The second part is, uh, I want to understand the physical picture of this Lagrangian. So if there's only the first term but not the second term. This first term can be understood as starting from some three-dimensional superfluid and condense some vortices. Uh, so I want to understand if there's any physically intuitive way to understand the second term. What do you do physically to the vortex loops such that the second term will arise? So maybe very, like a uh, 
maybe quick answer. It looks like uh, this may be done from some of the work by Jensen in the year or so maybe some work I did. Is that, uh, uh, you know, when you look at this A1, A2, DA3 term, actually, uh, what you should know is that the, the spatial, uh, the, the spatial feature for this term is that there is a A2, DA3 or A1, DA3 type of a term. So you can, in some way of dimensional reduction, you can see if you have A1 and A3, uh, which the, the dual field, B field is linked, let's say the B1, B3, and, uh, sorry, B1, B3, and B, B2, B3 are linked. Uh, there should be some, there should, there should be some physical signature to, to detect. What I mean is that if the theory has this term, let's say A1, DA3, or B2, B, uh, A1, DA3, or A2, DA3 in the lower dimension, you can find out this, uh, the, the, the linked loop from the, the, the dual field. Uh, there's a non-trivial, uh, there's a non-trivial uh, S1 circle, two S1 circle link in low dimension. You can, you can, you can use that to detect the theory. So I guess the answer, or the, the kind of answer you want is that uh, uh, perhaps that uh, you start from, suppose I, I use, it, suppose from the three dimension, low dimension, two plus one dimension, in the two plus one dimension, you have some link loop, let's say from uh, A to the A3, the, the, from this A to the A3 term, and then you consider the, the, the A1 gauge field as some kind of uh, uh, one dimensional uh, line, line that uh, in the Poincaré dual direction for A1, you place this three dimensional surface with this A to the A3 type of uh, uh, that type of link that, that uh, can be detected by A to the A3, then perhaps based on some kind of uh, condensation picture, just analogs to this type you can, you can get. I don't know what this is. This is understood what you. Uh. I'm, I'm trying to point that uh, if you look at it, this A1 wage or A1 cup, A2, and the uh, wage the A3 or Cup some Bolkenstein A3. Basically, you can see the spatial feature of A2 DA3 or A1 DA3. And that's, that's basically similar to the lower dimension of transignments, 3D transignments. Yeah. But there's some kind of term that uh, cup this 3D term to a 4D term. So uh -huh. if you use one of the gauge fields as the gauge field in uh, the fourth direction and then choose the uh, remain. Poincaré dual uh, three dimension as this term that uh, you are familiar that that uh, the physics of the usual let's say A one DA three or A two A I D A J that that's basically the the, the link loop. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, thanks. I guess I guess I guess. Do you understand? I'm not sure if I explained clear, but I I think I try to convey the picture. Yeah, I, I see the picture. Yeah, there's a uh, uh, in, in my paper with uh, yeah, I think we have a, a good picture uh, by considering this prolif proliferating of Z and domain. But uh, uh, from the U1 gauge field, uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah, uh, it's a little bit tricky. Yeah, uh, I will think more about this and uh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we can discuss this later. Okay. Sure. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, now I, uh, I, I try to uh, make a connection uh, with uh, uh, gravity theory. Uh, so, so the reason I think this kind of connection uh, is uh, natural because in 2 plus 1D, uh, about three decades ago, uh, Witten proposed a very nice one-to-one uh, uh, yeah, -one correspondence between um, einstein cartan action and the Chen Simon's uh, action of a Pankar group. So, so actually, uh, if we just, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, almost uh, just uh, rewrite this uh, einstein kalan theory in a slightly different form. Uh, we were straightforward to verify, just take this very, uh, yeah, very well-known uh, form of non uh, non-abelian Simon theory. So with A wedge GA uh, plus uh, two third A wedge A wedge A. Uh, and, uh, and this E is a uh, uh, framing field or 
Vban field, and this omega just a spin connection. So 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 we'll see. Uh, this is just the first order Einstein Cartan action, and this is just the uh, yeah, yeah familiar uh, Chen Simon's action. Uh, so such kind of uh, uh, observation uh, makes it possible to understand the uh, quantum gravity in two plus one d as an exact solvable system. But uh, of course, uh, as a UV completion theory, it's still slightly tricky because uh, uh, this Pankara group is a non-compact group, and uh, uh, its UV completion uh, sometimes involve a super uh, symmetric generalization of the Pankara group. And uh, I think uh, his work uh, um, yeah, gave rise to very deep insight about this uh, uh, ADS-CFT uh, duality. But uh, still, I think there's uh, some subtle problem not completely solved. But at a semi-classical level, I think this uh, uh, correspondence is just very straightforward, and it's a one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, okay, so now uh, I, I try to go to uh, 3 plus 1D. Uh, so 3 plus 1D, uh, the most well-known theory just the BF theory, right? And uh, uh, okay, so, so in this case, we can also uh, imagine, um, maybe we can also have a formal generalization of this uh, uh, Twisted BF theory in three plus one D. Yeah, we we can also starting from a BF term and just adding this uh, uh, so called AADA term. But because here uh, the, it's not a linkage field, so we also have need this additional A square term. Uh, so in such kind of uh, uh, formal generalization, uh, if again uh, we choose A to be the Pankara group, uh, then we can rewrite it as a, a component form. Uh, we will see. Uh, the first term here, uh, actually, this AADA term, uh, th this is exactly this uh, Einstein uh, Cartan action. Yeah, in the first order form, just take the form E wedge E wedge R. Uh, and this uh, third and the second, uh, second and the third term, that's the BF term. And it's not a surprising, uh, this BF term, both B. Uh, yeah, here I have B and B tilde because this B is corresponding to this uh, two form gauge field for the Lorentz symmetry, and this is corresponding to the translational symmetry. So we have B tilde A and B A B. So A B is a, uh, it's a, yeah, here uh, A B and A, they are all Lorentz index. <coughs> uh, and uh, and uh, uh, this theory actually, uh, we find the, uh, um, We find that uh, uh, it's also uh, have this so-called twisted gauge transformation uh, for translational uh, symmetry. So, uh, because in the usual BF theory, uh, if we consider this uh, Pankara, uh, if we, yeah, if we consider usual BF theory for the Pankara group, uh, then we of course can consider gauge transformation for uh, Lorentz symmetry and the gauge transformation for uh, translational uh, symmetry. But for the Lorentz symmetry part, uh, because here all this A, B, C, D, they are just the uh, Lorentz index. And it's easy to see this theory is uh, uh, just the invariant on the uh, local Lorentz transformation. So there's no problem. But the tricky part is this uh, uh, gauge transformation for the translational symmetry. Uh, so with BF term only, uh, so again, uh, we will see uh, if we do doing this local transformation, by shift e mu a to e mu a plus uh, d mu uh, f a, uh, the action is invariant. Uh, but in addition of this uh, e wedge e wedge r term, uh, actually we also need to modify the uh, gauge transformation for uh, b field and b field. So uh, yeah, so su such kind of modification is very similar to what we did for the abelian case. Uh, when we apply this one form gauge transformation for the E mu A field, we must uh, induce additional gauge transformation for the B field and B field. So, so this R is the usual curvature tensor, uh, and the omega is the spin connection, and the T is the usual uh, torsion tensor. Yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, in addition, we can also define this so called two form gauge, gauge transformation. Uh, so, the two form gauge transformation, just uh, again, just in the usual sense. We can, for example, shift this B tilde uh, by the covariant derivative of B tilde uh, of cos C tilde. And we can also shift the B uh, by some uh, 
yeah, by this uh, demil cosy. Yeah, so uh, here when we apply this two form gauge information for the BT of the field, uh, we also need uh, some shift. Uh, this is just because, uh, uh, yeah, because this Poincaré group, this translational part and the rotational part, they are, uh, it's a semi product, it's not a tensor product. So when we apply the two form gauge information for the BT of the gauge field, uh, naturally there must be a shift to make the whole action gauge invariant. Uh, so uh, next we can just solve the equation of motion. So it's not that surprising. Uh, yeah, it's the same for the, all this topological gauge theory. Uh, so we just get a flat connection. So, so in this case, we find this uh, the Riemann curvature, IAB actually vanish. And also there's also no torsion. Uh, and I took, if you view this theory as a quantum theory, uh, it's, uh, it's very straightforward to, to see this because uh, both B and B tilde just behave like uh, Lagrangian, Lagrangian multiple fields. So if you integral out the B and the B tilde, uh, naturally induce the constraint is uh, both R and T uh, just vanish. So uh, this is exactly the same as the two plus one D case. But uh, in two plus one D case, uh, uh, it's not a surprising because uh, when we write down this Einstein equation, uh, this uh, uh, the Riemann tensor and the rich tensor, they are just coincide. So when we require this uh, vanishing of rich tensor, we also require the vanishing of Riemann tensor. Uh, but, in, but in three plus one, it, this is a much stronger condition because when this Riemann tensor vanish, then it really tells us, uh, uh, yeah, there's nothing in the space time. It's, uh, it's a pretty trivial, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a pretty trivial background. But uh, uh, there are some uh, nice features that uh, uh, because uh, uh, as a, a topological gauge theory, uh, and we can also have this uh, well-defined uh, generalized gauge transformation, uh, it's easy to prove that uh, the coefficients of this theory, uh, just uh, similar to the two plus one D transcendence theory, all these coefficients are just quantized. And uh, the quantization of the coefficients uh, will uh, make the theory uh, becomes a super renormalizable uh, in the sense that uh, the beta function just vanishes. Yeah, so uh, this makes such kind of theory, uh, at least uh, semi-classically, uh, it's well-defined because uh, uh, it's a renormalizable theory, just as similar as the two plus one D case. So, uh, uh, so here, uh, yeah, if we, if we uh, interpret this, uh, the three plus one D, uh, topological gravity as a starting point, then it's very natural that uh, uh, the flat space-time background uh, yeah, become uh, very natural because uh, this theory uh, tells us that there's uh, literally nothing because the Riemann curvature also vanish. Okay, but uh, uh, so far we still don't have a uh, uh, Einstein gravity, especially uh, at a low energy, there's no gravitational wave. So yeah, it looks like it's not so interesting because uh, yeah, this is a uh, uh, very, very kind of a trivial uh, gravity theory. So uh, we might wonder whether we can add some perturbation uh, to, to drive this kind of uh, uh, trivial fixed point to much more interesting uh, cases. So the uh, conjecture is that uh, uh, starting from this uh, topological action, we can add a very small perturbation. But again, this is a, a topological environment term. Uh, so yeah, in the Abelian case, we actually show that uh, uh, in the loop colonization uh, picture, if we require this loop to have non-trivial linking barrier phase, uh, we can in induce such kind of term. But in the uh, non-Abelian case, uh, such kind of derivation, especially in the presence of uh, AADA term is much more complicated. And uh, um, yeah, we, we don't know, we still don't know the microscopic derivation of this term, but we just added, added it as a perturbation. And of course this term breaks the two form uh, gauge, gauge transformation. Yeah, you add a such kind of term, the previous two form gauge transformation is break down. Uh, but uh, it's a still, uh, uh, 
makes the theory uh, um, well defined uh, in the sense that uh, if this is a B field uh, gauge transformation, uh, if it just involves uh, um, abelian gauge transformation, it, it might be similar to this uh, uh, abelian gauge field. For example, we're starting from the F square term and we can still add a A square term. Although the A square term is not gauge invariant, but the theory uh, F square plus A square term, uh, it's still a renormalizable theory and uh, well defined. So, so here uh, we, we find it's indeed the case. Uh, by adding such kind of term, uh, we can do the classical equation motion again, and we find uh, the well-known Einstein uh, equation. And uh, a much more uh, detailed calculation will also uh, show that uh, such kind of term actually still make the theory renormalizable. Yeah, and uh, actually uh, we, we can also have a very easy uh, power counting understanding. So if we're starting from this uh, uh, topological gravity theory, we will see the uh, scaling dimension uh, for uh, each field. So for this E field, the, the, it's dimension one, uh, it's dimension one. And for the B field, it's dimension two. And for the omega field, it's also dimension one. And for R field, because it's involved derivative of the omega field. So it's dimension two. So, so in this uh, uh, topological BF theory and the twisted topological BF theory, uh, all the terms are just a dimension four. Uh, so, so this B wedge B term, of course, it's again, it's a topological environment and a dimension four uh, term. So yeah, that's a very simple argument uh, uh, why it's still renormalizable, but uh, actually it's a much more detailed calculation. And the calculation is a little bit tricky because uh, uh, our start, starting point is not a quadratic term. It's uh, uh, it's a uh, topological uh, gravity evolving cubic term, yeah, especially for this, uh, for such kind of term, uh, it's, uh, it's very tricky. Uh, it's not a, just a usual Gaussian integral. Yeah, but after some uh, uh, calculation, uh, we, we, uh, we see that even in the presence of BYGB term, uh, the, the whole action is still renormalizable and with vanishing uh, beta function. Uh, but uh, but uh, here I will I will uh, also emphasize a very uh, important difference uh, comparing with the usual Einstein Cartan theory, uh, because in the usual Einstein Cartan theory, uh, that kind of theory it just uh, contains the first term, right? Uh, we don't have this additional term. We also don't have this BYGB term. So so in in this theory, uh, this torsion free condition is a consequence of the equation of motion. It's not a con quantum constraint. But, uh, but in our theory, actually, this uh, uh, torsion-free condition in the absence of matter field, it becomes a quantum constraint because we can, yeah, formally, you can, you can think about uh, integral out this B tilde field. Then this uh, T, T is a torsion, uh, TA equal to zero condition, it's, uh, it's just like a, a constraint in the path integral instead of classical equation motion. So this makes the theory uh, quite different from the einstein kahn theory. And this difference can be shown uh, by coupling to fermion uh, fields. So I will, uh, yeah, I will discuss this more complicated uh, situation later. Uh, so uh, yeah, so in the next step, uh, we can just uh, apply this very standard canonical quantization uh, for the theory. So it's very similar to what we did for this uh, uh, Three loop braiding story for this abelian gauge theory. Uh, so again, we can introduce this uh, uh, canonical uh, momentum for both omega and E field. And this uh, canonical momentum, they are related to B and B tilde. Uh, so now we can uh, directly write on this uh, commutating relation for, uh, for omega E and B and B tilde. So, so for omega and B, they are just a canonical variable. And the E and B tilde, they are also canonical variable. But the interesting thing is that this B and B tilde, uh, they no longer commute. So this is exactly what happened when we're doing this uh, uh, canonical quantization for this uh, quantum field theory for three loop operating case. Yeah, we, we, we also find such kind of non-trivial commutator. Uh, but here, 
uh, we, we needed to slightly modify this uh, constraints uh, by adding this uh, BYGB term. Now, without such kind of term, then we just have a flat connection and we end up with a pretty uh, trivial theory. But it might, uh, might be we can still define a non-trivial braiding, uh, three loop or braiding loop uh, statistics. But as a classical theory, it's pretty trivial because the Riemann tensor just vanish. But uh, in the presence of this term, uh, we will modify this constraint uh, to make this B actually uh, proportional to R uh, with the coefficient of one over theta. And the torsion uh, still vanish. So uh, just to input this constraints, uh, we will find a non-commutative geometry in the end. Yeah, we will significantly modify this commutative relation because uh, uh, this curvature tensor R just involve the, the derivative of omega. So, so this the first uh, uh, commutative relation just imply this R, uh, this omega, uh, and this derivative of omega, they are not a commute. So this is kind of new types of non-commutative geometry and the, um, the representation theory uh, for this uh, uh, commutative relation turns out to be extremely hard. And uh, uh, so far we are, we are still working on this, uh, uh, yeah, this commutative relation and try to find a, uh, representation theory, but, uh, but uh, all these representation theory turns out to be infinite dimensional and it's uh, really hard to solve this. So the commutative relation between uh, E and B tilde is uh, still, uh, uh, yeah, just a still standard case. And uh, finally, this, uh, this R and B tilde, they're also not, not a commute. Uh, so both the first and the third relation, they are uh, non-trivial and they involve this small prime the theta, which can control this non-commutative geometry. So in a small theta limit, the theta go to zero, then we just go back to this uh, uh, classical physics with the commutative geometry. So uh, finally, uh, let me also briefly uh, comment why such kind of theory is interesting. Um, because uh, actually for the topological gauge theory, we can generalize it into arbitrary dimension. Yeah, so in, 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 in uh, two, the two dimension, we just have this uh, standard transcendence theory. And in three plus one, we have this twisted BF theory. And we can also think uh, arbitrary dimension. We just uh, wedge more E term here. And then uh, this is this uh, uh, Lagrangian multiple field, C and C tilde. In general, they are N minus two form. And uh, uh, yeah, and actually all this action uh, can be regarded as uh, dihedral Witten uh, gauge theory for Poincaré group. Uh, but of course, uh, it turns out that uh, this perturbation of a C wedge C type ter term is unique uh, for four dimensional space time because you can count in this uh, dimension. Uh, in higher dimension, it's, uh, it's really uh, hard to add any kind of uh, topological invariant term to make this uh, theory away from the topological fixed point. So, so for example, in uh, four plus one in, in the five dimension, then C is a three form and C wedge C is a uh, yeah, it's a sixth form and you cannot add it into the action. So this makes us uh, uh, conjecture this, uh, this kind of loop condensation mechanism makes the four dimensional space time very unique. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, because this BYGB term presenting this uh, non-trivial linking barrier phase and uh, this linking only uh, well defined in four, uh, four dimensional space time. And, uh, and that's a physical, uh, yeah, that's a, a physical understanding why this uh, uh, four-dimensional space-time might be unique from this uh, loop colonization picture. So uh, finally, uh, let me uh, briefly uh, tell you uh, the results uh, uh, after coupling with uh, matter fields. But, uh, but here, actually, we need to distinguish two types of uh, matter field. So in addition to the usual uh, particle-like uh, matter field, we can also think about a uh, loop-like uh, matter field because, uh, um, yeah, because we have the two-form gauge field, uh, both B and B tilde. So in principle, uh, both B and B tilde can couple to the loop current. But because the B field is condensed, condensed in the sense uh, uh, all this uh, uh, loop coupled to the uh, big uh, two-form gauge field actually will have a very big mass, mass gap 
And in this effective theory, actually, this mass gap uh, uh, is pushed to infinite, just like uh, what we did, did for the U1 uh, Higgs action. If we assume this uh, mass gap of the Higgs field is infinite, then we can simply add this A squared. Huh? So, so, so here, we, we cannot have a, a loop source for the, for the B field. We can only have possible loop source for the B tilde field. So uh, now we are just adding this uh, uh, kind of loop source. But the explicit form of this loop current uh, is, is, yeah, it's very hard to uh, explicitly write down because it's not a particle. So if we really want to uh, write down this microscopic uh, form of this uh, uh, loop source, maybe, yeah, we need to uh, develop some new mathematics beyond the usual, con uh, usual field theory. Uh, for example, uh, maybe we, <clears throat> we can have a string field theory in future, in future and a, uh, uh, possible to incorporate such kind of term. But, uh, but so far, we just add it as a, a background, and we just try to see uh, uh, what happened for this uh, uh, classical equation of motion in the presence of this additional source. So uh, yeah, before we do this calculation, there's also another tricky point. Um, yeah, because uh, if we're starting from this uh, uh, topological action, there's uh, no places for defining this uh, gravitational constant, right? Because uh, yeah, uh, similar to the two plus one D case and the three plus one D abelian case, if we just uh, look at this uh, uh, topological action, uh, I don't put an explicit uh, coefficient here. Yeah, sometimes uh, in, some, in certain convention with uh, proper choice of compatibility radius, uh, it could be like one over four pi or something, or one over two, two pi. But, uh, but here I just eliminated that uh, additional constant. But uh, uh, yeah, similar to the abelian case, uh, all these terms, they just uh, uh, have this quantized coefficients. So, so, so there's nowhere we can put a gravitational, con uh, gravitational constant. Excuse me, may I make sure one thing? Okay. For the double return for this uh, finite group or finite abelian group to escape the theory, mm -hmm. uh, we, don't, we don't need to use like a Lie algebra, non trivial Lie algebra with non commutative uh, commutators, right? There's no something like TA, TB non commutative with some uh, Lie algebra constant at ABCTC. But for the Poincare group, and uh, it's non-compact, and also there could be some non-trivial Lie algebra, right, I believe. So is the checking of a gate invariance much more tricky, I suppose, to formulate? Uh, do you mean this twisted or uh, non-twisted case? Even without C wave C, just the, the, the even the earlier slide, that those uh, are wage, E wage, E. So those part uh, you mean you mean without this term yeah, without, without this term just oh yeah without, without this term actually uh, actually all these commutator uh, can be uh, uh, can be well defined because it's just a flat connection yeah so so still formally you can you can still solve this commutator and uh, uh, this non commutative geometry just because of this uh, modification of these constraints. Yeah, because uh, uh, in the in the usual uh, uh, Poincaré gauge group, we we have this B field, uh, both B and T, they just equal to zero. Uh, so so then uh, then we just uh, yeah have this uh, very standard canonical quantization relation uh, with uh, a flat connection. So 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 there I think uh, uh, this canonical quantization is still well defined, even though it's a non-compact group. Now what's theta here? Excuse me. Uh, theta is just a small parameter. Yeah, it's a phenomenological parameter introduced here uh, by adding this uh, perturba perturbation. Because without this perturbation, uh, there's no way to derive the Einstein equation. Thanks. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, then there's a very natural question, how this uh, gravitational constant entered the story? Uh, so uh, here we uh, we have a, have another conjecture that uh, 
when this uh, uh, loop condenses, uh, yeah, because we, we know this B field also uh, transform non trivially under this uh, translational gauge symmetry. Uh, so that means when we condense, uh, uh, condense this uh, loop source coupled to B field, and uh, we get a mass term for this uh, uh, two form gauge field. Uh, yeah, it will also uh, break this uh, translational gauge symmetry. And uh, then naturally this uh, E mu A, which is the gauge field of the translational gauge symmetry, uh, can also uh, have a non-true expectation value. And uh, in this case, this expectation value generally, uh, yeah, it's not uh, equal to that function. Uh, should, yeah, should uh, introduce some um, dimensional, uh, dimensional coupling constant. And uh, then we can just interpret this, this dimensional coupling constant as LP. And then we can re redefine this E mu A by multiple, uh, by rescaled by multiple, multiplying this LP. Now we can just uh, redefine this E as LP times E. So in this case, the expectation value of e, e mu A just become a canonical that data function. And uh, this data function is uh, our usual convention uh, when we write, write on this uh, Einstein action in the first order form. So, so in this case, uh, after we, uh, rescale the field, we find this uh, <coughs> Einstein constant uh, naturally enter this action. So, uh, so here we, 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 we also see that uh, uh, yeah, this uh, loop condensation and the translation of gauge symmetry breaking is very important uh, for this emergence of uh, Einstein constant. So uh, after we introduce this Einstein constant, uh, then we can do the usual equation motion. Uh, by coupling to the loop source. So, uh, so this calculation is very complicated, but, uh, but I just show you the final results. Uh, so suppose we phenomenologically introduce this uh, uh, background loop source, uh, which is uh, uh, yeah, uh, parameterized by this uh, field sigma. So sigma is a two-form anisymmetric tensor. And, uh, and uh, uh, we will see this uh, uh, torsion just a proportion to sigma. This is very easy to see because uh, if we have this sigma wedge B tilde term, we also have this B tilde wedge T term. So after integral out B tilde, we yeah, uh, generally expect a TA uh, divided by LP is proportional to sigma. So, so that's why this torsion is a, a direct contribution from the loop source. Uh, but in, in addition, uh, this loop source will also contribute to this uh, uh, energy momentum tensor. So, so this G tilde is just the usual torsion-free Einstein tensor, uh, yeah, which is just uh, RFD minus one half uh, uh, R eta FD. So eta is a Lorentz signature and uh, R is a scalar curvature. Um, so this capital C gamma is just this uh, anisymmetric combination of this, uh, uh, this uh, small sigma, the loop current. And here this uh, sigma A just the, uh, just the contraction of the index of the lower and upper index. So, uh, so this, uh, this energy momentum tensor for the loop is rather complicated. But, uh, but uh, actually, uh, quite surprisingly, uh, we found that uh, although the, the whole form is very complicated, but uh, the trace of this uh, uh, energy momentum tensor of the loop source uh, turns out to be vanished. So, so that means in the presence of pure uh, loop source, the scalar curvature of this Einstein equation will vanish. Yeah, if we can just take a trace uh, from both sides, and we will see uh, we will see this R vanish. So uh, if we interpret this loop source as a potential candidate of dark matter, uh, then there's a very interesting prediction: the um, dark matter will not contribute to, to the scalar curvature. So uh, yeah, so um, this could be a very strong prediction if. Uh, if we assume this uh, loop like an extensive object uh, can be a good candidate for dark matter. And uh, uh, next, we can also think a more complicated case uh, by coupling the uh, field theory with the usual fermion matter field. For example, we can introduce in this Dirac field uh, because the property of torsion of this theory are very different from the Einstein Cartan action. So uh, it's important to examine the consequence of uh, coupling with Dirac field. 
Yeah, so if we couple with the usual bosonic field, then uh, there's no difference between usual Einstein cutoff action. Uh, so after we couple with the uh, uh, Dirac field, we, we find that there are uh, several contributions uh, in the field equation. So the left hand side is still the usual uh, Einstein tensor. And the right hand side, the first and the second term is the uh, is, uh, energy, uh, yeah, it's uh, energy momentum tensor for the, for the loop source. And the uh, second term actually is the coupling between the Dirac field and the, and the loop source. And the third line is just a contribution from the Dirac field. But here we, 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 we find a very interesting and important feature. Uh, we needed to replace this usual uh, spin connection uh, gamma with the torsion free crystal uh, Levy Civita connection gamma tilt, which uh, has no, no torsion. So this means uh, uh, in the absence of a loop source, suppose we turn this sigma uh, background to zero, then actually this action only contains this third term and there's no torsion at all. Yeah, so this is a very uh, a strong different prediction with, uh, uh, which is different from the usual einstein cartan action. The, yeah, uh, so, so, so in the usual einstein cartan action, it predicts that uh, the very strong four, four Fermi interaction or Fermi current will introduce torsion. But uh, in our theory actually, uh, turns out that uh, they never introduce torsion. Uh, only this uh, loop like extensive objects can introduce torsion. And all, of course, there's also a coupling between this uh, usual fermion field and uh, this uh, uh, loop like uh, extensive objects. And uh, this kind of coupling um, also might provide a new way to detect a dark matter if the loop like extensive objects uh, can be natural candidate of dark matter. Okay, so uh, finally, uh, let me just briefly uh, summary uh, for this talk. Uh, so yeah, basically we propose a topology quantum field theory framework uh, to compute the three loop reading statistics in three plus one D, uh, which is a natural generalization of the Chen Simon theory in two plus one D. Uh, and according to the relationship between Einstein gravity and the Chen Simon theory in two plus one D, we also propose a topological framework to understand the three plus one D uh, quantum gravity. And we propose to use the concept of uh, topological invariance uh, to replace the general covariance principle in three plus one D. Uh, so this is also uh, very interesting because uh, in the usual uh, general covariance uh, consideration, uh, yeah, many people propose like uh, using this uh, R squared term uh, to make the theory renormalizable. For example, this Horowa gravity. But actually, uh, in our scenario, it turns out that all such kind of high order terms are not allowed because the R squared term is not a topological invariant. And also from this uh, renormalizability uh, cons consideration, R squared term, it's uh, contain, yeah, it's a dimension, uh, dimension eight operator. Of course, it's uh, irrelevant and it cannot appear at low energy. Uh, and, uh, and finally, uh, if we assume that uh, in addition to the usual point-like uh, particle, uh, if our universe also exists to loop like extensive uh, objects, uh, then we can find a very natural generalized Einstein equation, uh, which includes this uh, uh, dark matter sector. And, uh, and finally, I also uh, want to uh, share some of my view about this uh, um, potential unified framework for the gravity and the gauge theory. Um, because, uh, uh, yeah, uh, in, in kind of matter, we, we also know that uh, if we're starting from this uh, topological B, uh, BF theory without uh, a three loop braiding, we can, uh, we, can, we can just uh, condense the loop and uh, act, add in this B squared term. We can also uh, get a usual um, gauge theory with a Maxwell term. But, uh, but here, we, uh, when we're considering this uh, uh, loop condensation, with the non-trivial three-loop operating process, uh, we find that gravity can also derive the in, in a very similar way. So the, this kind of uh, feature might imply some unification of gauge theory and the gravity. 
And also, uh, yeah, there are some very interesting consequences about the understanding of locality. So, so uh, in our framework, uh, uh, this non-commutative geometry for um, for the yeah for the quantization of gravity uh, imply that uh, at low energy actually uh, there will, will be no graviton. Uh, even semi-classically, we can uh, we can derive gravitational wave. And the yeah, even semi-classically, this gravitational wave can be observed by LIGO. But uh, still, uh, this kind of algebra is very different from the usual uh, uh, quantization of harmonic oscillate. So it's very different from the usual uh, graviton picture. So, uh, so uh, actually, uh, for, for this graviton story, um, I wrote a paper with Shagun about 10 years ago. And uh, we actually can define a lattice model to realize this graviton. But the, the interesting thing is that uh, it's really hard and almost impossible to add a nonlinear term uh, into the lattice model. And uh, this actually can be understood uh, in terms of this RG flow because all these uh, interactions uh, among graviton are irrelevant. And as a condensed matter uh, theory or a lattice model, uh, the low energy effective theory is uh, naturally sh must be a renormalizable theory. So that means if we can build up a lattice model with a free graviton, then at uh, any energy scale, it's just a free graviton. And uh, there's no way to introduce interactions among gravitons. And here we, we see that the only possible way to uh, make a full gravity theory is uh, uh, define this algebra from the non-commutative geometry. And this makes the whole quantization spectrum very different from the usual uh, graviton story. Yeah, it's uh, apparently it's not a harmonic oscillator. Uh, and finally, uh, more abstract, I think uh, many people think this uh, topological nonlinear signal model uh, over certain cli classify classifying space BG. So suppose G is a Poincaré group. If we define this classifying space of uh, BG of a Poincaré group, we can also uh, abstract define this nonlinear signal model on the classifying space. Uh, so yeah, but so 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 in this way, the uh, the further question is that uh, future question would be, uh, can we define this uh, so-called loop quantization physics uh, directly based on the classifying space picture? So uh, if we can do such kind of uh, um, construction, uh, that might be provide a new way towards the UV completion of quantum gravity, uh, because currently uh, our uh, theory just uh, uh, semi-classical. Yeah, so. It's just a, a classical, it's a, just a classical equation of motion. And this uh, uh, sigma, the loop source, just a phenomenological background. And uh, we still don't know uh, whether this theory is uh, um, well defined as a UV completion theory or it's not. Uh, because uh, yeah, we, we don't know how to um, define this theory in a non-perturbative way. So we only can add this uh, sum of the perturbation and derive some interesting uh, semi-classical equation of motion. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Thank you, Zheng Chen, for the lecture. A question from the audience? Please feel free. Hi, hi, uh, nice talk. So I have uh, just a couple of questions. Um, so have you considered, uh, for instance, uh, to replace the, the Poincaré group with the, the Sitter group? Because uh, at least in the Euclidean uh, signature. Yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very interesting question. Actually, I think uh, uh, once uh, uh, we replace this uh, Poincaré group with the Sitter group, uh, uh, even in 2 plus 1D, it's, uh, uh, yeah, the, the story is much harder because uh, um, in 2 plus 1D, I think uh, in one of Witten's work, he just replaced this gauge group as uh, SO2 slash 2. So that's a super symmetric generalization of the mm -hmm. this group. And uh, then he finds some very interesting feature uh, between this uh, uh, ADS uh, CFT cor correspondence. But uh, uh, yeah, but I think uh, the story is still not uh, completely clear so far. So, so, so here, I think uh, if we want to replace it with the Deceta group, we also need a certain supersymmetric generalization. And uh, um, yeah, I, I think uh, this really um, requires certain UV completion definition of this uh, 
topological uh, field theory. Yeah, uh, just because I, I was uh, just wondering, because in the Euclidean uh, signature, the, the, the sitter group is SO5, which, which is compact. So maybe, I mean, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to work with compact group is always uh, nicer, right? So it maybe can be, you know, can give a little bit of insight about quantization. Uh, Okay, so, so and uh, the, second, uh, the, the, sec the second question is also related to the torsional part of your theory. So, um, so, so in torsion gravity in uh, three plus one dimension, this is the uh, further topological term, which is called the Nye-Yan term. So it's basically uh, T wedge T minus E wedge E wedge R. Uh, so this is uh, something that people have also used in condensed matter, for instance. So I was wondering if you mm -hmm. add also this topological term, maybe, I don't know if you can get any extension of your theory or, uh, uh, or I don't know, do you think it's something? Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, you, you, you mentioned this T wedge T term, right? Yeah, you, you have just, yeah, the T wedge T is just part of this uh, near Yan invariant. So, so basically, mm -hmm. so, so if you consider also E wedge, E wedge R, then this together with T wedge T is the near right, right, right. And I was wondering, you know, just if what, what happens if you really have also this extra term and, or uh, if it's something useful or not for, uh, for your theory. Um. Yeah, in the absence of metal field, I think that term does not change the equation of motion, right? Um, yeah, 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 it's a different derivative, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in the presence of metal field, uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I can I can check this situation, but uh, uh, but I think maybe the classical equation of motion is still the same. So, so in the usual case, I remember that term does not change the classical equation of motion, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a, yeah, as a total derivative, yeah, should not. Uh... Right, right. Yeah. So, so I guess uh, you can add that term, but it does not change the classical equation of motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more comments from the audience? Maybe I have one, but probably a bit more private. Uh, since I remember you also spoke with Witten about this, and I wonder what is, what is his comment or suggestion, if you, or maybe we can yeah, talk. I, I think uh, uh, Witten is more interesting about this. Uh, uh, yeah, the UV completion theory of, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the UV completion theory of quantum gravity. But uh, that's, a, that's much harder, yeah. 
So, so currently, uh, we just try to use this classical equation motion to understand some classical physics first uh, to verify whether this uh, yeah, classical feature is correct or not. For example, we, we have a very strong prediction that this, uh, uh, yeah, the, the loop like extensive object, uh, suppose uh, they can describe dark matter, then they contribute for vanishing of scalar curvature. Uh, or in other words, it's, it's, yeah, it's something like a conformal matter, the, the, the trace of uh, uh, energy momentum tends to vanish. So this is, uh, could be a very strong prediction. Yeah, so just uh, this condition. And, uh, and if consistent with the uh, current observations, so, so there might be, yeah, it's, uh, it's worth to spend more time to uh, push forward. Yeah, because the UV completion of this theory is uh, really hard. Especially uh, with this uh, loop condensation, I think uh, in general, yeah, in general, even for the abelian case, we don't know how to do this uh, uh, explicitly. So, so by adding this uh, BYGB term, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, just like a phenomenological theory, not a, a microscopic theory. But, uh, but uh, yeah, we, 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 we just uh, see some uh, interesting classical uh, consequence, um, whether this fermion current really contribute to torsion and whether this uh, uh, yeah, dark matter can really uh, contribute to scalar curvature or not. I, I think uh, this question may, may be very interesting at the classical level. So, so we, we focus more about this classical physics at, at the moment. Thank you. Any questions more? In any case, let's thank uh, Zhenchen first. Thank you, Zhenchen. Thank you. It was a nice lecture. Thank you. If other questions, you can still ask. <laughs>